Hi folks, welcome back to Statistics with Mr. Robeson. Today we are finally looking at standard deviation, our most important measure of spread. We're going to see how to calculate it in two separate ways. So once the long way, and then we'll learn the shortcut. All right, sorry if this is a long one today. All right, so here is our situation. So in college, you get to choose your classes, your professors, and the class time. This is true to some extent, and especially if you go to a larger school. A statistics professor at a large university noticed a big difference in discussion ability and test scores between the morning and afternoon statistics classes. I noticed this too, by the way. My afternoon class is very talkative and my morning class is pretty quiet. She suspected there was also a difference in the amount of time spent on assignments. Because the introductory statistics course is taken by hundreds of students, she decided to take a simple random sample of 10 students from the morning classes and 10 students from the afternoon classes and have each record the number of minutes spent on a particular assignment. Her teaching assistant gathered the results and reported that the time spent on homework was the same for morning and afternoon classes. Hmm. Hmm. Well, let's check on the data here. All right. So for the morning classes, the mean was 45 minutes and the median was 44.5 minutes. So we might be slightly skewed towards the bigger numbers here, but they're pretty darn close to each other. Afternoon classes, the same mean and median as the morning classes. Hmm. So maybe they are the same. So we look at the numbers, and it looks like all the numbers in the morning classes are 40s, except for this 152. In the afternoon classes, well, they're all over the place. They go from 15 to 85. So maybe there's another measure we could use to tell the difference between these two sets of numbers besides just the mean and the median. All right, so I know we know range, but range is not really that useful. And if there's like one outlier, range is all sorts of screwed up. So range, again, is the biggest number minus the smallest number. IQR is good too, but, you know, sometimes we need some other things. IQR works if we're trying to make a box plot, but oftentimes we want something else besides IQR. In this case, we want standard deviation. So standard deviation, here's the definition. It's roughly the average distance from the mean of the data values, all right? So that's the average distance from the mean to all of the data values or to each of the data values, all right? It is a measure of spread. So when we're talking about spread, if we have the standard deviation, we can just say the standard deviation is this number. Now, the way we calculate it is probably the most complicated formula we've had so far this year. So we find the mean. Remember, X bar is the sample mean. Let's see if I can label that over here. So remember, x bar is the sample mean. Mu was the population mean. So here's the sample mean. x sub i are the x the data values. So these are the data values. It's like x1, x2, x3. We have 10 data values, so you go x1 to x10. So we subtract, we find the difference, and then we square the difference. And then we, this means sum. This means we add them. So once we square them all, we add them all together, and then we're dividing by n minus 1, where n is our sample size. All right, so always n minus 1. And then since we squared them here, we're going to cancel it back out by taking the square root in the end. So we take the square root in the end to give us back our standard deviation. So s is the symbol for sample standard deviation. So just lowercase s, because it's what standard deviation starts with. All right, so let's do this. We're going to need a calculator. So let's pull up our calculator here. There's my calculator. Let's turn it on. And the first thing we need to do is we need to take these x of i values. This was our, our morning numbers. And we need to put them into a list. All right, so to put them into a list, we go to stat, edit, and then we type in the numbers. So I've already typed them in here. So I've got all the numbers typed into L1. So again, that was, nope, not, don't have it here. So that was stat. So we press stat. And then we chose number one, edit. Okay, so there is all, there are all of our numbers. That's all of our data right there. So next thing, we want to take those data values and we want to subtract the mean. So we already had the mean listed. The mean listed was 45. So the way we can do that real quickly and easily, let's move this over just a little bit, there we go, is we're going to make a second list. And in that second list, we're going to take each of these values over here, and we're going to subtract 45. 
So instead of writing each one of them separately, what we can do is at the top of the list here, where the list name is, we can type L1, so second one to get L1, and then we can put minus 45. So that will take each value in L1 and subtract 45 from it. And so watch if I press enter here, voila. There we go. So those numbers should match these numbers right here. 3, negative 2, negative 5, 3, negative 2, negative 5, and so on. So now we have all those data values, and these are called the deviations. My bar is not kind of showing up there, so that's bothering me a little bit. Let's add that in. So there is a bar right there. Important. All right, so these are our deviations. It's how much each of these numbers is away from the mean. It deviates from the mean. Next, what we want to do is we want to, well, we want to try and, let's see, what, what happens if we try and average these guys? So what happens if we add up these numbers? All right, that's a fair question, because you would think we just want to take these deviations and add them up and divide by however many we have, and that should be our average distance from the mean. So what we can do, if we leave here, we press second, and then quit. See how it's right above mode, quit. So we're going to do second stat... And we want to go to math, and we can just find the sum, add them up. So number five, and we want to pick our list, our list that we're working at is L2, so we press second, two, see how it says L2 right above it in blue? We can close our parentheses or not, doesn't really make a difference. We press enter, and zero. All these deviations sum up to zero, so if we add them up, we get zero. Well, why is that? Well, because this is the mean, we should have the same amount of above the mean as we should have below the mean. So if we add up all the negatives, it should be the same number, just negative, as if we add up all the positive numbers. All right, that's always going to happen. So this is why we have to square them all. So this is where the squaring part comes into the equation. All right, so the way we can square them all real quick and easy, is we can just make an L3 with everything squared. So we'll go to stat, we'll go back to edit to get back to our lists. We'll go over to L3 up to the top, and we just want to square everything in L2. So we're going to type L2, then I'm going to press the X squared button, that squares things, and I'm just going to press enter. Bam! There's all of the deviations squared. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to add them up and then divide by n minus 1. All right, so to add them up, we're going to go back to our second stat, math, and we want to add them up. We don't want to find the mean of them because we're going to divide by n minus 1. So add them up. Oops, I'm not, I don't want to do it in here. All right, so now let's do it out here. Second list, math, sum, we want L3, close the parentheses, 142. All right, and then we want to divide by n minus 1. So that is divided by, let's see, we had 10. So 10 minus 1 is 9, but we're just going to type 10 minus 1 here just so we remember what we're doing. We get that. All right, so we're almost there. All right, and there is a reason why we divide by n minus 1. It's because it's a sample. So there's a reason why we do this, and it's since we're using a sample. All right, so since we're using a sample, that's going to make it a little bit bigger than if we divided by n. Because right, we don't have all the data values, so we're going to err on the side of making it slightly bigger by dividing by n minus 1. There's also some other reason, which is more mathematical, that deals with something called degrees of freedom. We haven't talked about yet, so I'm not going to introduce that. All right. So here's our calculations. We got the 15.779. This has a name. So when we get to this, before we take the square root, this is called the variance. We don't have a special symbol for variance. We just use s squared, standard deviation squared is the variance. So that's important. That comes up a lot. All right. So then we take our square root and then we get our standard deviation, 3.927.
This is an AP Calc. We don't need three decimal places. If we said 3.9, that would be fine. If we said 4.0, that would also be fine. If we want to say 3.97, no problem. But there's our standard deviation. That is the average amount that each of these values differs from the mean, which is 45. So about four units. All right, or we could do this all at once on our calculator. So to do this all at once, bring the calculator back here. Before it turns off, I'm gonna go to stat. I'm gonna go to calc. There's lots of good things we can calculate here, but I'm just gonna do the first one, one variable statistics, because we have one variable, the number of minutes these people spent studying. So we're gonna do that. All right, our original list was L1. So I'm gonna go back to L1 because I want the actual data values. The frequency list, we're not gonna do anything with frequency list. You can either leave it blank or you can put a one in there. And then we can press calculate and voila, there's a bunch of numbers. But if you look right here, X bar, there's our mean. So this can get us our mean from a list of numbers. And right here, S sub X, that's the standard deviation of the X's. That's the exact number we got when we did all those calculations, 3.972. So that S is our standard deviation. All right, it gives us other numbers too, like N, the number of data values, All right? And this we'll go over in a little bit. It tells us our min, it tells us Q1, it tells us our median, Q3, our max. So there's like our five number summary right down there too. So if you ever wanna make a box and whisker plot, we can just get the numbers right from there too. One variable stats, very useful, one variable stats. All right. So there's our standard deviation, and there's a puppy. I know you need some cheering up. It's adorable, I know. All right, so this other guy here, that is our population standard deviation. So if you notice, it's always a little bit smaller. So it's always smaller, because we're dividing by n instead of n minus one. All right, and this is the population standard deviation. So we only use that one if we have a whole population and it said we took a sample, so we're not going to use that one. We will rarely use that one. All right, so now we can find the standard deviation of the other set of numbers. So we can take these guys, we can put them into a list, we can do our one variable stats, and it will tell us our standard deviation. If you want to do that, pause the video, go ahead and do that. All right, and if we do that, we get... 21.2, all right, so it's pretty big, a lot bigger. So the other one was 3.97, this is 21 point something, or 22 points, I don't remember which one it was, but it doesn't really matter. It's something in the 20s, all right, so we get 3.97 there and 20 something here. So there is a big difference between these two sets. One of them has a standard deviation of four, one of them has a standard deviation in the 20s. This one is more spread out. All right, so if we are comparing them, this one is more spread out. All right, because it has a standard deviation that is bigger. So the standard deviation for the afternoon class is larger than the standard deviation for the morning class. We usually use subscripts to denote things. M for morning, A for afternoon. So more spread out. All right, so that's how we calculate standard deviation. We usually use our one variable stats. So we, if we put the numbers into a list, and then one variable stats. All right. And this is all under the stat button. Stat. Lots of fun things under the stat button. We'll use many of them later on this year. But that's it for now. So next time we'll go and we'll look at some properties of standard deviation and we'll talk about weighted means. Bye.